All right, let's get right into the antibiotics. We're going to get into the classifications, definitions, cell wall synthesis drugs, metabolic pathway drugs, ribosome synthesis drugs, and I'd like to remind you to be pharmacocidal. We'll get into that later. Hey, what up all my tooth doctors and doctresses? Welcome back to the Tooth Factory for some more tooth knowledge. Today we're going to finish up with some antibiotics used in dentistry. So get some paper, pencil and notepads out. We're going to get into some more reviews, some briefs and loads of notes. Hope you like it. Enjoy, like, share and subscribe and hang in there for more. Bacteria cause infection and we don't like infection so we need antibiotics. These are further classified into cell wall synthesis, metabolic pathway, inhibition of DNA and protein synthesis. Now, they don't cause this, they stop this. Which means cell wall synthesis of a bacteria is stopped by penicillin, cephalosporins, carbapenems, vancomycins and monobactams. These are groups of drugs which we will get into later. Metabolic pathways of a bacterial cell is stopped by metronidazole and sulfonamides. Also, the inhibition of the DNA of the bacteria directly is done by quinolones and rifampicin primarily. The protein synthesis, the food of the bacteria, is inhibited or stopped by aminoglycosides, macrolides, lincomycin, clindamycin, tetracycline, and chloramphenicol. We'll get more detailed into these drugs just in a bit. Let me first get to some short definitions and one concept called beta-lactam. Bacteriostatic, number one, it means this inhibits the bacterial cell replication but does not kill the organism. So static, not kill. Bacteriocidal, this agent causes death of the organism. Cidal, death. What is a broad spectrum? A broad spectrum antibiotic is a wide range of activities, so gram positive, gram negative, um, anaerobic, aerobic, any. Narrow spectrum is limited range of activities, so specifically gram negative or specifically gram positive. Now, one concept about penicillin groups that I'd like to take into account is called beta lactame. This is their structure. Cephalosporins and penicillins are both made with beta lactame rings. They are responsible for rupturing the cell wall of the bacteria. Therefore, the internal organelles or the molecules of the bacteria will leak out causing cell death. Keep that in mind, beta lactame. Let's move on. So the cell wall synthesis inhibition done by these drugs are all bacteriocidal. They inhibit the transpeptidase enzyme. This enzyme is required to formulate the cell wall of the bacteria. These drugs inhibit this enzyme causing a hole or a pore into the cell wall of the bacteria and causing the internal structures to leak out. Penicillins first. They are further divided into narrow spectrum non-resistant to beta lactamase, narrow spectrum resistant to beta lactamase, extended spectrum beta lactamase sensitive, extended spectrum with beta lactamase inhibitors. Just a side note, beta lactamase is an enzyme produced by the bacteria that breaks down the beta lactame structure of the penicillins. These drugs are not resistant to beta lactamase, such as penicillin V and penicillin G. Penicillin G was the prototype which was not stable in the stomach with the acids, so they created penicillin V. Penicillin G is used as intramuscular, penicillin V is as used as oral. Narrow spectrum resistant to beta lactamase. These drugs will not let the bacteria break down the beta lactame structure of the antibiotics, such as methicillin, dicloxacillin, nafcillin, oxacillin. The extended spectrum beta lactamase sensitive amoxicillin and ampicillin are both weak against the bacteria to break down the structure of the antibiotic, but they're very good because they're extended spectrum, which means they have a wide range of antibiotic effect. Extended spectrum with beta lactamase inhibitors, these are separate, separate molecules used in junction with amoxicillin or ampicillin such as amoxicillin plus clavulinate, which makes augmentin, ampicillin with sulbactam, which makes unison. These are penicillins. Cephalosporins are then described into four generations, one, two, three, and four, out of which the oral ones are very few. Cephazolin, 
Cephalothin, Cephalexine, Generation 1, where Cephalexine is oral. Cephamandol, Cephozitin, Cephotetin, Cephachlor, and Sufuroxine are both are all second generation with oral and IV being Sufuroxin, third generation. Cephotaxime, Cephtrioxone, Cephazidim, and Cephaxim, where Cephaxim is oral in the third generation, and fourth generation has no oral as it only has Cephapim. Carbapenems are wide spectrum, which is good. Beta lactamase resistant, which is very good. They're cross allergens to penicillin, which is not good. They include imipenem, metropenem, itropenem, and so on. Monobactams, they're narrow spectrums, which is good when you want to target a very specific type of a bacteria. Beta lactamase resistant, again, very good. It includes astrionum. Now, vancomycin is cell wall destructing, but it is not a beta lactame. Therefore, it can be classified on its own as a wide spectrum for life-threatening infections, such as MRSA, which is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus infections, or Clostridium difficile. But in the side effects, it may cause red man syndrome, as it may increase the flushing. It does not have a class allergenic to penicillin. Therefore, these drugs the vancomycins, they're very strong, but not as commonly used. A bacterial cell's ribosome creates protein. Protein synthesis is stopped by these drugs, such as aminoglycosides, macrolids, lincomycin, clindamycin, tetracycline. Let's talk about them. Aminoglycoside itself is bactericidal. It binds irreversibly to 30 S ribosomal units causing translocational misreading, which means the RNA-DNA reading is not properly done by the bacteria, causing a mutation and then cell death. They include gentamicin, amecacin, which are primarily used. Streptomycin and neomycin and carnamycin are also very strong drugs, where streptomycin is an anti-tuberculin drug used in TB. The macrolides are bacteriostatic, which means they do not kill the bacteria, they stop their replication. They bind to 50S ribosomal subunits. They do cause liver toxicity. They prolong the actions of digoxin and warfarin because these drugs do metabolize in the liver. And also it does increase the QT duration of the ECG, which means that it does have a longer length of a beat of a heart. Erythromycin, clarithromycin, and azithromycin are strong, very risky drugs, and they are placed in order of preference where erythromycin is least preferred, clarithromycin is okay, and azithromycin is best out of the three. Lincomycin, bacteriostatic, 50S ribosomal unit. Clindamycin, bacteriostatic, 50S ribosomal unit, work the same way. Tetracycline, it is a bacteriocidal. It kills the bacteria by binding irreversibly to 30S ribosomal units, such as aminoglycoside. It inhibits the collagenous concentrates into the crevicular fluid. Therefore, this is a very risky drug. There are three subclassifications, short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting. Short-acting is tetracycline, intermediate is dimeclocycline, and long-acting is doxycycline and minocycline. Now, one thing about tetracycline is that when given to newborns or uh, in late pregnancy or early childhood, their teeth will turn out to be brown or dark yellowish in color due to its chelative property. Tetracycline tends to chelate with calcium present, therefore it should never also be taken with milk in stomach. Now, the last is chloramphenicol. It is a bacteriocidal, although it binds to 50S ribosome unit. All of these drugs will have an effect on how a bacteria metabolizes or creates its proteins and how it sustains. Let's move on to the next category. Last but not the least, let's take a look at the metabolic pathways and inhibition of the DNA with metabolic pathways further divided into metronidazole and sulfonamides where metronidazole is bacteriocidal. It stops the metabolic pathways and it kills the bacteria at an instant. Sulfonamides are also bacteriostatic. They have a competitive inhibition of the PABA, paraminobenzoic acids, which are used to produce folic acids and then its own metabolism is carried on. They include all the sulfides. Inhibition of the DNA are further divided into quinolones, 
vampicin, both bactericidal, where quinolones will inhibit the DNA gyrase and topoisomerase number four, and it will cause cell death. These two are the important molecules for life and the structure and the function of a bacteria, where ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin and norfloxacin will actually kill that process, killing the cell. Rifampicin will inhibit DNA function by inhibiting the DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. This is a process done during the creation of the bacteria during its birth, where rifampicin will get into the cell and stop its function. Again, this drug is also used in anti-tuberculin therapies. So, now we know the classification of antibiotics, the definitions and some small concepts, all the three types of drugs that come within and remember to be pharmacocidal and go conquer pharmacology.